All right. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Shakti Irmargu. I'm a communication specialist. I've been a journalist for about a decade. And uh, for the last 12 years, I was working with the British High Commission. So communication is something that comes naturally to me. For British High Commission also, I was in the role of packaging interesting stories about the UK-India relationship. And my last role with them was uh, being the head of digital diplomacy. And uh, that role is something that I've just recently given up to practice and uh, to work closely with my father, who's uh, right now on a self-imposed exile in um, Helsinki, in Finland, because he exposed a miracle. And there was a case of uh, blasphemy and hate speech against him because of which he couldn't continue being in India. So I have decided to go to him, pursue my PhD there, and be with him and you know, work with him closely at the Rationalist International. So I'm very, very pleased to be here at Ethi Center. This is the first time I'm visiting Ethi Center, but uh, I've, I, it's like coming back to family. So thank you so much for inviting me. Media and secularism, coming to the topic. Before I begin the topic, I would like to also welcome on stage Mr. Sham Sundar. Uh, from Hans India and Amit Pal, Director of Communications of FFRF from USA. Thank you so much. They will be speaking. I, they have the tougher role. I'm just chairing and taking notes. So I will pass on this mic to them soon. I will just make my point briefly and then pass on the mic to them. Secularism, the definition. Secularism is the belief in the separation of religion and state or the idea that the government and religious institution should be separate and independent from each other. It is based on the principle that religion is a personal matter and that the state should not be involved in its regulation or promotion. Now let's turn to the situation in India. We live in a very diverse country where we have people practicing multiple faith. Hinduism is there but it is also home to significant populations of Muslims, Christians, and people of other religions. The Indian constitution guarantees the right of freedom of religion and prohibits discrimination on the basis of religion. However, in practice, religious tensions and discriminations do exist. And the media can play a role in either exasperating or mitigating these issues. There are few different ways in which media can promote secularism in India. First and foremost, media can provide a platform for a wide range of voices and perspectives, including those that may not be represented in mainstream or government-controlled media. This can help to create a more open and inclusive society where people of different beliefs and backgrounds can coexist and dialogue with one another. Additionally, media can serve as a check on government and religious institutions, holding them accountable for their actions and ensuring that they do not overstep their bounds. For example, if a government or religious institution tries to impose its views on the general public or discriminate against certain groups, the media can expose these actions and bring them to light, helping to prevent abuses of power. But is it happening in the society today? These are the questions that my esteemed panelists will discuss. So, passing on the mic. Uh, um, thank you so much, and uh, uh, I'm so flattered to be here, as I've said. Uh, this has been such a memorable visit, first with, uh, in Maharashtra with a rationalist activists out there, then uh, in Chennai with uh, the Darbhad Kazakam, uh, of course the Periyarists, and now at the Atheist Center. I'm so flattered and honored, and uh, 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 it's been so great to be in Vijayawada and Andhra Pradesh for the first time in my life, actually. I've been to the South, as in South India before, but never to Andhra before. So, uh, let me start by doing uh, what I think I... Uh, I'm sorry, first, a bit of personal background. I am very much a media person. I was lucky enough to... Uh, I'm lucky enough to have spent all my life uh, in progressive uh, outfits. I started as a managing, the managing editor of the Progressive Magazine, which has been around in the United States since 1909. So I was the managing editor for a long time. And of course, as the name implies, it covers all sorts of issues, including secular issues, from a progressive perspective. And from there, I transitioned to FFRF five, six years ago. And I'm in charge of media 
for FFRF. So it's been wonderful I've been able to play a part in and observe media, especially in the United States, but I also keep an eye on media in India. I teach at a local college, comparative politics. So obviously, for obvious reasons, since India and the United States are my two countries, I'm very, very much uh, uh, a clothed observer of what's happening out there. Let's first start with the United States and its issues, which actually, as problematic as they may seem, India just overshadows them completely. So in the United States, it's very interesting. The mainstream media is not very religion suffused. So religion does not play that huge a part in coverage on a regular basis. Of course, around Easter, around Christmas, there is more kind of, you know, like movies, there's more media coverage of religion, churches, this, that, and the other. But generally speaking, there's not that much coverage of religion per se. And then we'll come to uh, religion and politics in just a bit. However, there is also absence of coverage of secular issues in particular. So you won't find very many secular activists on, you know, sort of boldly rationalist, boldly secular, boldly atheist or agnostic being covered from that perspective. So that is a problem. Um, and that's a void that FFRF has tried to fill with its TV show, with its YouTube channels, with its uh, uh, radio show, with its uh, Facebook and social media coverage, because that is definitely a void. The other side has much bigger resources. There is no doubt. I mean, it's good if you don't know these names. Has anyone heard of the name Pat Robertson? He was uh, an evangelical preacher. He's had a show called 700 Club. I may be wrong because he's 90 plus, but far as I know, the show is still going on and it's been going on for the last many decades. So there are these Christian equivalents of Baba Ramdev. It's, <laughs> I think that'll be more sort of, you know, relatable to you, who have their own TV shows, own channels, own sort of media resources to uh, beg for money to propagate their uh, perspective. But as I said, the mainstream media is generally not that religion suffused. The other good thing is that the mainstream media in the United States is generally speaking not on the side of Christian nationalism. There is, of course, Fox. There are other right-wing media outlets. But much of the media there, the New York Times, the uh, broadcast media like CBS, ABC, etc., are hostile to the notion of a certain religion being imposed politically on the country. And let me tell you from my personal uh, interactions over the decades with media people, they are actually, if you point out to them that as a non-Christian, it's a wrong thing to do, whether at the local level, at the state level, at the national level, they will nearly completely always acknowledge it. And even if they're Christian, they will certainly say that is absolutely not correct. So in spite, in that sense, in spite of Trumpism, in spite of all the problems and issues out there, as I said, there is a general lack of uh, coverage of secular voices. I'm much more hopeful for the United States than for India, <laughs> as you would uh, uh, probably know for you know what reasons, on so many levels. And here, I'm sorry, but I don't follow Telugu news channels or Telugu uh, movies that much, although I did see RRR, and I have some comments on that. <laughs> the dubbed version, the dubbed version. I, mean, you know, I, I, I did see that. But Hindi cinema, it's kind of interesting. Hindi cinema and media, when I was growing up, in terms of secularism and in terms of uh, basically religion, was somewhat different. One should not romanticize. Um, I don't know how many of you are Amitabh Bachchan, uh, see Amitabh Bachchan movies, but there was a movie of his called Nastik. Does anybody know? Is everybody's Hindi uh, good enough? Does everybody know what the word Nastik means? So, yeah, an atheist. But you know what the movie is about? How he is an atheist because he's misguided, and in the end, basically, he sees the light and finds religion. <laughs> really? So, there were movies like this. There's a movie called Gutti. Does anybody remember that? I was, unfortunately, I saw that one. You know, it was a Shah Rukh Khan, basically. Again, the same thing. 
He's the same thing, yes. You know, he's a non-believer, Shah Rukh Khan in the movie, and then he finds light and sort of, you know, becomes devout. I'm not making this up. So there were movies like that all the time. However, there was a movie like Hum Aap Ke Hain Kaun, this big hit, which was nothing but a continuous, uh, basically, parade of Hindu rituals, Hindu upper caste rituals. So there was all that problem. There's no doubt. But at the same time, there was a certain kind of um, of glorification, if you will, of secular values also. Amar Akbar Anthony, of course, being a very, very good example. You know, so maybe non-belief was not given very much of a, a platform, but certainly the notion of interfaith harmony was much stronger, basically, you know. And there's that scene, um, one of my Pakistani friends was laughing because he's a doctor and he said, it's not possible. I said, it's meant to be symbolic, where uh, Nirupa Roy suffers an accident and she's in the hospital and of course by uh, chance as happens in Hindi movies her three sons who have been uh, sort of you know it's lost and found movie they don't know she's the mother but they come to give blood and they're all giving blood at the same time basically and they ask who what's your name and they say Amar Akbar Anthony which is the notion of giving blood or sustaining mother India so all of that was there much much so before pundits often were mocked in Hindi movies Basically, you know, as being kind of, you know, clueless, as being kind of, you know, uh, completely, you know, like uh, clueless or exploitative, etc. Or worse, I think from my reading of the Indian media, it's changed a lot in recent times. So first of all, for example, TV serials, there is such a glorification of Hindu rituals, upper caste rituals, one after the other, superstitions, blind faith. I mean, it really is on a completely different level. Uh, and, and the other thing, of course, that basically is also very, very disturbing is the injection of Hindu nationalism. So when I was in India last time, I'm not to blame, I was giving my uncle and aunt, my Mossi and Mossaji company. So I was at my cousin's place in New Delhi. And unfortunately, I had to sit through Samrat Prithira Chauhan. You know, basically, it was an awful movie on so many levels, Akshay Kumar's. And in that, of course, he is the defender of Hindu faith. He's a defender of the Hindu faith against Mohammed Ghori. And basically, you know, it's all these movies, I mean, Kashmir Files is uh, the most extreme example, are totally, not only infused, but the foundation is Hindu nationalism. And much of uh, uh, Hindi cinema has gone over to that side, with the result that even the kind of the silly secularism, silly in the sense, Manmohan Desai, if you've seen his movies, they were not very realistic. But now his movies seem like good nostalgia, that they were at least in their own way, sort of, I'm sorry, at least in their own way, uh, uh, kind of, you know, upholding these values, which are, I wouldn't say they are absent, but much diminished. I'm, of course, not talking about alternative cinema. There is still a bit of that there. I'm not talking about actors like Nasruddin Shah, my favorite, you know, uh, and uh, I interviewed him some years ago, in fact. That was one of my high points of my career to interview him. But mainstream cinema, I think we all will agree, has generally, generally speaking, gone over to that side, which is um, uh, really unfortunate, as has mainstream media in India. Again, I'm not talking about Telugu media, I'm talking about English and Hindi language, basically. And Hindi language channels are so nationalistic, so right-wing. I mean, you know, from what I follow, I see them uh, even, even there on the net. And of course, English channels, the Godi media has been invented for Hindi and English language media. NDTV, the last remaining bastion, Gautam Adani, none other than Gautam Adani, as you all know, bought the channel. Ravish Kumar, one of the last remaining liberal progressive voices, resigned from the channel. Uh, the uh, our founders have resigned. So it's bleak. It's really bleak. There are outlets out there, many based in the South, of course. South India saves India somewhat. Frontline. Uh, uh, Hindu, the Hindu, which I joke with my friends who don't know about the Hindu, the title is a bit of a mis, uh, mistitled. It's a bit mistitled because it's actually a fairly secular paper. Then there's, you know, the wire, there's scroll online. But still, you know, things are bleak basically because, um, you know, they're, they're in the minority. And then we come to the uh, real uh, sort of, you know, the, the, the elephant in the room, and that's social media. What does one say? I mean, WhatsApp is full of, you know, it seems, of course, we know this as IT cells, which keep on propagating these lies and propaganda, which go from, you know, I see the same misinformation 10 times within a few days. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. So, you know, Yogi wearing, uh, you know, as the head of a secular 
uh, the, the largest state in a secular country, him wearing saffron robes is nothing wrong because uh, Vivekanand did that. I'm like, what's the comparison? Vivekanand was not a government official. I mean, you know, basically, you know, and then, you know, Nehru bashing, secularism bashing. I mean, all of that goes on on a regular basis and is disseminated and propagated so effectively and actively that my relatives and friends keep on quoting that back to me over and over again or forwarding that to me or to each other. So that's why I think, you know, on a smaller scale, I know, I wish it was on an equal scale that the work that secular forces are doing in this country is so invaluable. And, you know, basically the fact, for example, the Atheist Center has so many YouTube channels and is sort of trying to dis uh, disseminate the good word is so heartening. Uh, of course, you know, the DK is, is doing great work in Tamil Nadu. I am so appreciative and as I said, I am so heartened by this visit because otherwise I was losing, I was losing faith. Excuse that word. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amitpal. Now over to Shyam. Friends, when I joined this profession about 40 years ago, there used to be a lot of securities, the left-oriented people in the media. They used to report facts, since facts are sacred. Comments are free. You can comment, but facts are sacred. You have to report the facts only. Now, these uh, right-winged people are joining the profession. They write only what they think is the right. I mean right. <laughs> Not that right. <laughs> These right wing people have become very dangerous. See, where whatever the whatever be the news, they see only their right side and report it in the right way. They never take the middle path. That is the dangerous part of. It. See, in 1984, anybody remember uh, Operation Blue Star? Operation Blue Star was there was, the, there was a, army was sent into the uh, Amritsar Golden Temple and they killed some terrorists and seized uh, ammunition in large scale ammunition, missiles, uh, handheld grenade, grenades, shoulder uh, what do you call uh, so many. Ammunition, and everything they seized from there. Brahma Challani was the reporter at that time. Now he is the editor of some paper. Brahma Challani was a young reporter. He went inside and saw the terrorists was, were tied with a rope and shot dead. He reported it. It's a fact. For that reason, the state filed a present case against him. Raja Droham, they filed a treasure case against him. That is awful, really. But he's only, he only reported what he has seen. But he said, in the, in the uh, uh, greater interest of country, you should not report it. What is this? So, journalists have been facing this nonsense for quite some time. Still, what I suggest to the budding journalists also, stick to facts. Never go away from facts. The problem is, now what uh, we said, WhatsApp University. Everybody is a scholar there. They think something. They think, they imagine something and write it in the WhatsApp. And these people, so gullible, <laughs> they simply forward it without thinking. Without even thinking, without... Yeah, analyzing without to see whether there is the reason or not, no reasoning and questioning. But forward, hey, it is right, let's forward. What the nonsense. You can't forward like that. You have to think twice before forwarding. WhatsApp University has become a big threat to the, the simple, I'll, I'll tell you one anecdote. The one fellow wrote, Air India introduced 50% discount to the senior citizens. Everybody immediately started forwarding. I received it. What nonsense? Never. It, it, it is not possible. Give 50% to senior citizens. I called to the Air India office. Is it right? No, sir. We will never give. 
Then immediately I wrote, this is nonsense, don't believe this. But, but by the time it went around, I keep on receiving one after another again, again and again. See, this is how WhatsApp University is working around the clock. Now yeah, it has become a habit for these people to spread nonsense in the WhatsApp. Don't believe anything. Don't believe everything. Use your brain and think about it before forwarding. <laughs> okay. When I, uh, when I was uh, young and uh, started working for uh, Newstime magazine, Newstime Daily newspaper in 1984, uh, we received a report from uh, Khammam district. One report. It said, it's a challenge to ethics. Headline is, challenge to ethics. What is this inside? A young boy, 10-year-old boy, is spitting out stones, big stones from his mouth. Spitting out. It is a challenge to ethics. How, how it is a challenge to ethics, I don't know. So that fellow wrote it, that reporter. Some other, news, some other newspaper, any evening newspaper, they already published it. Challenge to ethics, nastika loka saval. He published it. Then uh, I was uh, I was sitting calmly at the desk. He, it came to Inadu people. Inadu opened it. I asked look, Saval, come on, let's see. It's a big news. Then, then someone uh, came to his senses. Sir, you are an atheist. What do you say about it? He asked me. Thank you for asking me without going ahead with the news. <laughs> yeah, is our reporter present there? Has he seen spitting out the stones? But the, the stones look fresh and uh, dry. It won't be like that. <laughs> eh? How can they be dry and fresh? Eh? Simple thing, logic, we have to use it, logic, logical, uh, there must be logical sense to it, we have to ask. Have our reporter, the, is, is he present there? Has he seen it spitting it out? Or, and has he asked any doctor around, is it possible to spit out the uh, the stones from a boy's mouth. Then that fellow, that uh, reporter got uh, energy. That fellow went there <laughs> the next day. They would not publish it. We did not publish the story. We stopped it. That fellow went to, they went, uh, went to him this the next morning. Oh, why? We want to see whether he is spitting stones or not. So, uh, uh, he, he was sitting there. Keeping it, keeping it, uh, plate in in front of him in a plate, and uh, waiting for it. Nothing happened till the afternoon. Sir, now I'm hungry. I will go home and uh, take food and come back. So he went in. <laughs> he went home and come back. <laughs> when he coming inside, our reporter checked his pockets. <laughs> there were stones in his pocket. <laughs> there were stones in his back pocket. Hey, what is this man? No, no, I spit out that I'm way too <laughs> That's not true, man. Come sit and spit out here. We want to see. <laughs> so nothing happened. We published this. This story we published the next morning. See, truth seeking is such important thing. Truth seeking. You have to use simple logic, ask questions, extract answers, Write the truth. That only the job of the media. See, immediately after some some days, now everybody knows that I am an atheist at the desk. Next day, after some days, that uh, uh, Kanchi Swamiji came to Vijayawada. Uh, then he asked me, go and report him. No problem, I went there. I went there, I took the notes, what, whatever Swamiji said, and uh, filed the report. Hey, you are an atheist, how can you file this? What it is? My atheist means my conviction. But whatever says he is, he is a truth. It is a fact. Facts are sacred. You have to report facts. I reported the story. They end the matter. I don't believe them. That is a different issue. But I reported exactly what I, have, what I saw there, what he said, what he speech. That is the point. But I, I, I did not uh, distort 
I did not say any uh, thing in, the, in the, my personal opinion. That is the fact. That is the that if you follow that in the media, there will be truths in the newspaper. Now, with corporatization and thieves starting newspapers, thieves. I, I, I openly say, thieves starting newspapers, news channels to cover up their mistakes. See, everything, everything is written in their own way. If you read one newspaper, one uh, the opposition leader looks like a bandic bandit. If you some read some other newspaper, he looks like Buddha. We don't know the truth. What is truth? The truth lies between somewhere. He is not a bandit at all, he is not a Buddha at all, but truth lies somewhere between. We have to find out the truth between. Here now, it, is, it has become very difficult to, for people to know whether it is true or not. A criminal case was filed against a particular man. Now it is 12 years, almost. After 11 years, the, the, the trial, it has not reached the trial stage. They, they, he is still uh, uh, filing discharge petitions. You know what is discharge petition? Discharge petition means I am no way connected to the crime. Please discharge me from this case. If, if I live. Then it takes three to four months to uh, read it and uh, uh, hear arguments and, uh, and he will uh, ultimately dismiss it. And he will file another uh, discharge petition after three months. It will take another three months <laughs> to, <laughs> to get it uh, uh, dismissed. That is how these people are taking, co taking the courts for a ride for years together. If the case comes to a logical conclusion, you will be behind bars. But they don't like it. That is how it is the problem everywhere. That's okay. If you, if you, uh, I read an English novel somewhere, uh, John Grisham's novel. He, the guy, a lawyer asked the, uh, his client, how much money you have? If you have any money, I will drag the case for 20 years. <laughs> it's in the US also, it's everywhere. But there should be some, some, uh, see, people don't know all these things. People don't know all these things. They think, see, this man is a very pious man, virt virtuous man. He is a God believer. He believes in Christ. Hey, he believes in everything. That is, that is why he is a good man. See, unnecessarily, the, these five cases are filed against him, the opponent people. That is how they believe. After all these years, if it is honest, it will be dismissed in a couple of days. The court will throw it out in one go, but they don't allow it to come to the logical conclusion. <laughs> that is how the things are going. See, for instance, in Shashikala case, Shashikala case, uh, soon the Tamil Nadu elections are coming uh, around the corner. They, do, they don't want Shashikala to participate in the elections. You know something? Some Someone from the top, I don't know, I don't say which top. Someone from the top gave instructions, take their case to logical conclusion. Within four weeks, the case went to the logical conclusion and she was, she was sent to jail. Four years imprisonment. But they did not take away the property. She has uh, an amassed through, uh, it's a disproportionate assets case. They did not take away money. It is still there, but she is in jail. Four years. After four years, she came, she came out. But she can't uh, contest elections for ten years. By the time she will be dead. See, if the powers that be agrees, the case will be taken to logical conclusion. The problem is, we can't write this. <laughs> the problem is, we can't analyze this. And... Immediately at 3 a.m., someone will knock you on, the, on your door, take away with you. That is the dangerous situation journalists are in now. 
లైక్ గెస్టప్పో వాట్ గెస్టప్పో డిడ్ ఇన్ నాజీ జర్మనీ పీపుల్ పీపుల్ ఆర్ నాకింగ్ యువర్ డోర్స్ అట్ త్రీ ఏఎం టేక్ యూ దేర్ టేక్ యూ సమ్వేర్ దట్ ఈస్ ద డేంజరస్ సిచ్యువేషన్ నవ్ సో ఈవెన్ ఇఫ్ యూ రైట్ ఫ్యాక్ట్స్ ఆల్సో ఇట్ హ్యాస్ బికమ్ వెరీ డేంజరస్ దీస్ డేస్ థ్యాంక్ యూ channel app and watch your favorite channels from your mobile app available on google play store and subscribe to the channels